Hi friends, I might sound a little bit unad un un oh my god, I can't talk. <laughs> my voice is a little bit under-energized in these videos because I've had a bit of an asthma flare up. I love this time of year, but I'm gonna push through. I'm not gonna allow myself to wallow in self-pity even though I really want to. <laughs> I have a lot to talk about today and I have loads of videos to make and I don't know how long this is gonna go on for, so let's hope it's only like a couple of weeks and not like a couple of months oh my god if this goes on past christmas i'm gonna cry <laughs> but yeah anyway shut up get on with it <laughs> Hello, hello, I'm Florentina Faconti and welcome to another episode of What I've Been Watching. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about what I've been watching in September. No, it's not October, shut up. <laughs> I've got loads to talk about today, mostly new releases, so let's get on with it. Starting with the newest MCU film, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. I decided not to do a proper review of this because by the time that I got round to like actually doing the notes for a review, everyone had already done one. And also I didn't really have a lot to say about it. I really enjoyed it and it was a lot better than I was expecting it to be because I was really underwhelmed by the trailers. I was not hyped for this at all. The bus scene and the scaffolding fight were both incredible and some of the best combat scenes in the MCU, but the rest of the film wasn't that exciting for me. No spoilers, but I thought the end battle was just a bit much. I just found it a bit too Pacific Rim, to be honest. And it just lost focus of the actual main character of the story. The cast were really good and the performances were very strong and I had fun with it both times that I saw it in the cinema. But it's just not my favourite MCU film. I'd say it was like strongly in the middle, possibly a bit higher. It just personally wasn't for me. I can't put my finger on exactly what it was. I think it might have been a writing issue that I haven't warmed to it as much as other people have. I still really loved it just I prefer other MCU films. I've got a few entire series reviews that need to be done, but like Shang-Chi, I don't really have a lot to say about them. I'm quite indifferent about a lot of things that are coming out at the moment, so I thought I'd just chuck them all in here, just talk about them briefly. And I'm gonna start with Nine Perfect Strangers on Hulu and Prime Video. Okay, I'm really conflicted about this one. I honestly don't know how I feel about it. The cast was incredible. Everyone did a fantastic job and I was absolutely loving the show. I was really excited for it every week, but I feel like the buildup was too much for how anticlimactic it was. I think I would have enjoyed it more if I just watched it all in one go. It was just waiting for weeks to be disappointed. I definitely think I need to watch it again and just binge it as like one whole story rather than eight separate episodes. And fingers crossed that will help me enjoy the ending a little bit more because right now I'm a little bit disappointed with it. Next is the Disney Plus original series Monsters at Work. Now I did an episode one review of this and I absolutely loved it. It kind of hit me in the feels a little bit as well that I wasn't expecting. However, the rest of it was not good. I mean, it's a fun kids show but it just didn't grip me and I found it quite boring to be honest. It was so disappointing that I haven't even finished it. Like I got about seven or eight episodes watched. I think I paid attention to about five. I just couldn't be bothered with it. I don't know, it was nice seeing the characters again and some of the old characters back as well. Just after a few episodes, that wasn't enough to keep it going. And also Mr. Corman on Apple TV+. Plus. I loved the first episode. I thought it was really clever. And I'm not saying that I disliked the rest of it, but it's a weird one. After the first episode, I left it until it ended to binge the whole thing together. And once I started it, I realized that it's not really one to binge. It's very real and raw. And then it just suddenly switches to something really like surreal and odd. And it's difficult to get your head around what's actually going on. It really makes you think and it's a lot to take in all at once. So I've stopped like halfway through, I think I got to like episode five and I'm just going through them slowly now. It's definitely interesting. It's worth a watch, but it's not for everyone. I would say give it a few episodes, see if you like it. If not, it's a lot of the same thing throughout. So you're probably not going to enjoy it. 
I'm currently in the process of re-watching American Horror Story, preparing for season 10, which is coming to the UK on the 20th of October. And before you come at me with like, why are you waiting? You could just watch it online. I know I can watch it online, but that's naughty and illegal and I don't like doing that. I would rather wait. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. <laughs> I think my reduced lung capacity is affecting my brain function. Anybody else feel lightheaded? No, just me. <laughs> I'm just hoping that because it's coming out on the day that the final episode is airing in America, we get the whole of season 10, but I highly doubt it. I will still probably cry anyway. <laughs> At time of recording, I have just finished Coven, so that's season three. I have six seasons left to binge in just under two weeks. It's doable, it's fine. But yeah, once it's finished, I will do a full review of season 10 and then a ranking of all 10 seasons. But while I'm on the subject, American Horror Stories has just been released a few weeks ago and it's coming out weekly. And like, thanks, but I hate it. <laughs> I mean, I don't hate it. It's okay, but it's just not what I wanted. The build up for it was that it was gonna be something completely different and every episode was gonna be a standalone story. And yet the first story is set in Murder House and it's in two parts. What? Don't get me wrong, I love the mirroring that they both start with Murder House, but I was just expecting something different. Like, haven't we been back to Murder House enough? Like, I'm getting a little bit bored of Murder House now. <laughs> also, it's getting a bit teen screamy. Like, every episode has been very young main cast, and I'm just like, can we have some grown ups, please? <laughs> I think I'm mostly just upset that they underused Aaron Tveit in that second episode. He needs to be in a proper season of American Horror Story and just be like a prominent character and just, I love him. <laughs> but as well as TV and films, I love stand-up comedy and I've been catching up with a few Netflix specials that I've missed. One being Bo Burnham Inside. I've been meaning to watch this for so long and I've had the Jeffrey Bezos song stuck in my head from TikTok for weeks. So I thought, right, finally time to watch it. And honestly, it's the most unique and frankly insane specials I've ever seen, but it's a masterpiece. It's so good. <laughs> a very different show is Phil Wang's Philly Philly Wang Wang. <laughs> I love that title so much. <laughs> Which I think has instantly gone up there as one of my favourite Netflix specials. I was in tears. His humour is an acquired taste, like he's not for everyone. He's really awkward and I personally love that. Phil Wang is very high on the list of comedians that I want to see live. I think he would be absolutely hilarious. I just... Soon. Soon. One comedian that I have seen live though is Ed Gamble and I rewatched his Prime Video special, Blood Sugar. This has a lot of the same material as his live show, Blizzard, which was the last live comedy show that I went to see. I went to the final show of his tour at Shepherd's Bush in 2019. Oh my God, 2019. That feels so long ago. It was one of the funniest live comedy shows that I've been to. So I just love rewatching Blood Sugar because it just takes me back to being in that theater with everyone. I could watch it over and over so many times and it would still be hilarious because his delivery is just so perfect. I'm gonna see him live again in February to see his electric tour with Mary Ann and I'm so excited. I'm so hyped, yes. Two of my favorite British shows have returned to Channel 4. The first being Great British Bake Off. Yeah, Bake Off, not the Great British Baking Show as Netflix US have called it. Sorry, that's just blasphemy. In all honesty, I'm a little bit underwhelmed with it so far. I am happy that it's back and I love Noel Fielding and Matt Lucas together. They're a great hosting pair. And I love seeing all the yummy things that they're making, but I'm not really warming to any of the contestants. I usually have like a definite favorite or two, but there's no one that's really standing out for me as like, I want them to win. There's a couple that are okay, but I'm mostly just rooting for George because he's bringing so much Greek Cypriot to every bake that he's doing and I'm living for it. <laughs> but Taskmaster series 12 is finally here. Yes. I'm absolutely loving Morgana Robinson and Guz Khan. And if either of them win, I will be so happy. I mean, I'll be happy with any of them win because this lineup is great. And there's not many TV shows I will sit and wait like on the day that they're released. But as soon as Thursday comes around, I'm like counting down the hours to Taskmaster time. <laughs>
And finally, the Netflix fan event, Ta Dum, that aired on YouTube a couple of weeks ago. They released loads of clips and trailers for so much new stuff that they've got coming out over the next year, and I am so hyped for it all. <laughs> to name a few, there's Army of Thieves, Don't Look Up, The Harder They Fall, Bridgerton Season 2, Emily in Paris Season 2, Stranger Things Season 4, uh, The Sandman, The Crown Season 5, um, Enola Holmes 2, so many. Oh my god, I'm so excited. Before I go, I've been on a few live streams this month on other channels, so make sure you check them out. I have a playlist of all the collabs that I do, both on this channel and other people's channels. I will put the link to that in the description, in the cards, and at the end of the video. But make sure you're checking my Instagram regularly, because I put all of my updates about anything that I'm doing on there. So yeah, that is what I've been watching in September, but make sure you join me at the end of this month for what I've been watching in October. Thanks for watching, give it a like if you liked it, subscribe if you want more of this, but as always, stay safe and look after yourselves. Bye!